So for section 6.6, .6, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through kind of a general um, notes for factoring. I'm going to tell you right now, um, this is gold. If there's something that you need to have on the test, this is it. Uh, you're going to be using factoring like crazy in Math uh, 51. So I would encourage you again, have this down, save it for the next course. You use factoring all the time. Okay. So first of all, we're going to factor out any like terms. Okay. So um, make sure you put that as your first step. Always look for like terms first. Second, what we do is we go, how many terms are there? If there's four terms, three terms, or two terms, then we deal with it differently. Four terms, we factor by grouping. Here's an example. 20k to the third plus 4k squared minus 40k minus 9. Two groups. Group the first two. Group the second two. The first two have what in common? A 4 and a k leaving me with 5k squared and plus 1. The second two, 45 and 9, since the leading coefficient is negative, factor out the 9, leaving us with 5. Oh, this should have been, oh, I pulled out, I'm supposed to pull out 2k's, which makes that just k. Okay, so 4k squared, 5k plus 1, minus 9 leaves us with 5k plus 1. So now what's the purpose of this? These two groups have what in common? 5k plus 1 times 4k squared minus 9. That's factoring by grouping. Do verify that 4k squared minus 9 does factor further. So this is actually a really good example of, of just verifying. This is a binomial. This is a binomial. We should have just had that section. So what ends up happening is 4k squared minus 9 becomes 2k plus 3, 2k minus 3, and then bring up the 5k plus 1. So this is a really good example because it just reminds us that what? This can still be factored. So make sure that you verify those. Second, if I have three terms, you can do a mental math or they call it guess and check, but I go first. It multiplies to make x squared. Second, what multiplies to make that 3 combines to make a 2. About a 1 and a 3. To make a negative 2, the 1 would need to be positive. The 3 would need to be negative. And it is really that easy. What happens if the A is not a 1? Well, it gets a little more complicated. I recommend AC factory. I like to use the table. Some of you like the X. Some of you like the area model. All are fine. But I've already set this one up. So 5X squared minus 13X plus 6. 5 times 6 is 30. That's my AC. I want to make a 13. How about 3 and 10? 2 and 15 might work too. Um, but the issue here is what? If I do 15 minus 2, if I do 3 and 10, I am not sure what the issue is. Let's try the, 15, the 2 and the 15 first. So 5x squared, if I did minus 2, no, plus 2, minus 15, plus 6. Yeah, I'm actually just curious why, what would happen here. So these have an x in common, leaving us with 5x plus 2. And these have a 3 in common, leaves us with 5x minus 2. That doesn't work, because these 5x plus 2 and 5x minus 2 aren't the same. So the 2 and the 15 don't work. I'm just making sure that I'm not lying to you before I do this. Yeah, no, this didn't work. Okay, that's okay, so just try it. The 2 and 15 doesn't work. There is another option. Instead of 2 and 15, we could use minus 3 and minus 10. Another way of thinking about this, I think, no is that these need to be the same because I need them to multiply to make a positive at the end. But if, you, like I said, if you didn't see it, you could have checked the other one. These two have one in common, x leaving us with 5x minus 3. These two have a minus 2 in common, leaving us with 5x minus 3. So now the two groups have one in common, 5x minus 3 times x minus 2. All right, so that's the example. Like I said, you don't have to stick the examples. You could just have this, 
the factory notes, but I like to just put an example next to each one. Um, so if there's one that's harder for you, then have an example on your note card next to it. Okay. Um, basically, what did we do? We went from three terms to four terms. Why did we want to split this middle term? Well, when it's four terms, I can factor by grouping, and it's a lot easier. Okay. So that's really my my favorite approach when the a is not a one is to use that AC method uh, factor by grouping. What if it's a squared minus b squared, a minus b times a plus b, so x squared minus 9 is x times x, plus 3 minus 3. What if it's a, a squared plus b squared? Well, we said that does not factor, so don't do it. It's a trap, right? But what if it's a cubed minus b cubed or a cubed plus b cubed? That does work x cubed minus 27, the first group stays the same, so x minus 3, and then it's x squared opposite plus x times 3, 3x, always positive plus b squared, 3 squared is 9. What if it's a plus? This one is factorable, a plus b, so x plus 3, a squared, x squared, minus ab minus 3x always positive plus b squared is 9. So I mean I'd be able to factor the more complicated ones of those um, in the homework but on the test you know maybe something at this level nothing too crazy um, really is a math 51 issue okay. If you have those notes you've already those are all the notes you need for 6.6 .6. all we're going to do is go through them and, and check them. First, is this ready to be factored? Well, yeah. Some people will look at this and go, oh, it's a trinomial. Mm -mm. What's the first thing we should look at first? Any like terms. 6, 3, and 63 are all divisible by 3, and they also all have a x. What does that leave us with? 2x squared minus x minus 21. What does this do for me? Some people will guess and check this to death. Please feel free, but I like AC. What is 2 times 21? About negative 42. I just used the table. If you want to put it in the X, you can. But I'm looking for things that make negative 42 and combine to make a 1. Uh, 1 and 42 won't. 2 and 21 won't. 3 and 14 won't. 4 doesn't go in. 5 doesn't go in. But 6 and 7. 6 and 7 if it's a positive 6 and a negative 7 split it. Be careful here because this 3x a lot of people will lose it so I would just draw an arrow to remember to bring it down at the end. Uh, so we now have 2x squared we said plus 6x minus 7x minus 21. Why did I want to turn that to four terms? Factor by grouping the first two have one in common 2 and 6 by 2 they both share an x leaving us with x plus 3 when this leading coefficient is negative, make sure to factor out not just the 7, but the negative, so that we're left with x plus 3. And now, what do these two terms have in common? x plus 3 leaves 2x minus 7. Why do I have this arrow over here? Oh yeah, don't forget to bring down the 3x. This section is nothing new. It just takes what you've done, puts it together, and you'll see it kicks it up a notch. Next example, already has four terms. Four terms, factor by, group the first two, group the second two. 20 and 4 are both divisible by 4. Do not forget to bring out the k squared. That leaves us with 5k plus 1, negative 45 minus 9, pull out the negative, and the 9 leaves us with 5k plus 1. These two groups have one in common, 5k plus 1, and if we pull that out, that leaves us with 4k squared minus 9. It is so tempting to be done, right? But what I'm left with is a binomial, and one of these is a squared minus b squared. So you have to continue to factor that. What multiplies to make 4k squared is 2k and 2k minus 3 and plus 3 to 0 out in the middle and don't forget to bring down the 5k plus 1. Now factored 
completely. Okay. Um, notice that was also the example that I put on the notes. I think this is a great example because it merges them. Um, but be comfortable factoring by grouping. This is a mess. A mess with how many terms? One, two, three, four. If I look at my notes, four terms says factor by grouping. Pull out. These two have one in common. I think just a P. Leaving us with P squared minus 2 Q squared. These have what in common? Looks like just a Q. Leaves us with P squared minus 2 Q squared. These have what in common? P squared minus 2 Q squared. And if I factor that out, that leaves me with P plus Q. Now this is tempting to look at this and go, oh, that's something squared minus something squared, but that 2 kind of jacked us up. Um, so this actually doesn't factor any further. I encourage you to check it, but right, you're going to end up going what times itself makes 2. If it's not a pretty number and that one's not, then we leave it. This is factored completely. Don't do this. I'll have some people do this, and then they'll write not factorable. That's a little irritating because, first of all, it's a damn lie. You factored something, right? You literally factored something out. It's no longer factorable past that, but the answer is not that it's not factorable. The answer is this, where you factored something out. Okay, let's practice some cubics. And these are some cubics on steroids. This will not be on the uh, test for Math 55, so don't freak out. Is this something squared minus something squared? Well, no, that's a 9, right? Something squared is not going to make a 9, so that's not this the time, right? But it is something cubed minus something cubed. What cubed makes 125? How about 5 times 5 times 5? What cubed makes x to the ninth? x to the third. Check this. x to the third, 5x to the third, 5x to the third. The 5, the 5, and the 5 would make 125 x to the third, x to the third, x to the third is x to the ninth. What cubed makes 27? How about 3? What cubed makes y to the third? How about y? It, since it's a cubed minus b cubed in my notes, this is what I have. I'm literally just going to fill it in. a minus b. 5x cubed minus 3y. a squared. 5x cubed times 5x cubed, 25x to the 6th, opposite, plus AB, 5 times 3, 15x cubed Y, and last, B squared, so how about 9Y squared. There's a lot to keep track of here. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now that... Um, this is something that is a definitely a Math 51 question. I'll have a couple in the homework. Please don't freak out about it. Next one. Is this? Well, it's plus. So is it a squared plus b squared? If it is, that's easy. It's not factorable. But unfortunately, third is not something squared. So it's another type of binomial. a cubed plus b cubed. x cubed. cubed. a it's just x. b, we had this number earlier, what cubed makes 343? How about 7? What cubed makes y to the 12th? Well, how about y to the 4th? How do you know? y to the 4th times y to the 4th times y to the 4th would give us y to the 12th. Okay? So what do I do now? I fill in this terrifying looking formula starting with a plus b, a plus b. I meant to fill this in, so I'll put this a squared plus ab plus b squared. This will be a squared minus ab plus b squared. So let's fill it in. What's a squared? What's x squared? It's not very exciting. Minus a times b, x times 7y squared would give us 7 x, y to the fourth. Sorry, I don't know why it said squared. Plus b squared, 7y to the fourth times 7y to the fourth would be 49y to the eighth. Terrifying.
And that, I believe, is it. So if you got this, this is the scariest factoring you're going to see. So I'm not saying it's super easy, but don't uh, make a bigger issue out of it than it really is. Um, get through the homework. I, um, how will you know what's going to be on the test? I will have uh, I will have a quiz on the ones that you need to focus on, and I will have a review to help you focus in. So get studying, and uh, we got a test coming up soon.